My name is Mohammed Ali Amini. I'm the CEO president at Nanology Labs. A lot of people these days are starting to talk about intrapreneurship uh, versus entrepreneurship. Um, what does intrapreneurship evoke to you? And what sort of skills or mindsets do you think that uh, relates to? When we talk about entrepreneurship, it, it is actually being focused more on the employees within an organization uh, that are motivated and they're proactive to uh, follow their sort of novel idea. Um, and they would like to take that novel idea into reality. Uh, and honestly, entrepreneurship, when we talk about entrepreneurship, we, we're technically talking about a system, an integral system with uh, integrated sort of a, um, a resources uh, provided to the employees who are actually eager to follow their innovative idea within the system to create an, a framework around that innovation to bring it into reality. Speaking about the value that intrapreneurs can bring to an organization, you're a CEO yourself. Uh, what do you think those? Uh, what do you think that value is, and what are some of the benefits, but perhaps also risks associated with bringing on board people that are intrapreneurs? Definitely. So, as you said, there are definitely risks being taken to really adapt uh, and bring novel innovation into a set of. Uh, business or a company, <clears throat> but definitely there are a lot of other values. So to for companies, there's as I, you said first, let's focus on the risks. Uh, definitely, if you are bringing a new innovation or actually bringing the culture of entrepreneurship into your company, uh, you you need to allocate time uh, from your employees and resources from your company towards novel ideas, uh, while you actually making profit from the existing technology or the businesses within your company. Uh, but at the same time, on the other hand, for to have a sustainable business and to keep yourself in a game and in the market, you have to adapt yourself with novel technologies. That is where an uh, intrapreneur and intrapreneurship uh, gives you the upper hand um, to survive in this competition and keep you up in the race. Speaking of innovation, how does intrapreneurship impact innovation and speaking to a scientist, to the scientific process in general? And do you personally encourage intrapreneurship within your team? If so, how? Definitely my team, I uh, support this. I think uh, intrapreneurs um, as a, like employees within a company, they know the, the, the problems, the challenges for a specific type of industry sector because they're, they're facing with these challenges in their daily business. Uh, so uh, they have a better understanding on the uh, industrial demands. So they can, if they have a, like a, a, the motivation, the passion about if there is a novel idea to overcome with this uh, challenges and come up with a solution that I guess in future will help the company to overcome uh, future barriers. Um, from inside my team, definitely we allocate of ask my, my team and myself even writing down all the problems we are facing and the challenges we have and we think that we're going to have face with in future similar stories of other businesses being successful or failed because of those challenges and then um, putting all together and thinking about giving specific time within a work or a month uh, that uh, what are the solutions? What would we, what we should do, uh, or what would we be doing uh, if we were faced with those challenges? That actually creates, in the beginning, that a uh, mindset within uh, our team uh, to always um, consider this uh, path, like consider uh, you know entrepreneurship as a sort of a, a solution for future challenges. Uh, you know, to overcome these problems in future. Uh, and at the same time, you know, to get us prepared uh, that when it comes, uh, if, for example, if, if there's not always sunny days for businesses to work, right? They're all rainy days. So we need an umbrella for those days. Of course, the holy grail for any commercial organization is commercialization. Uh, yeah. And as a scientist, you're probably acutely aware that it's great to have an idea or a technology, but until it is commercialized, um, yeah, it won't go much further. Um, what impact do you feel from your point of view, uh, intrapreneurship can have on an organization's ability to commercialize? 
as you said, uh, the innovation alone is not enough. N- not an individual entrepreneur can bring an innovation into uh, into reality, into into marketplace. Definitely, we need a system. Uh, we need from top to bottom, from bottom to top uh, in the company, from executive to the employees, um, that sort of um, connection that can bring and allocate resources to entrepreneurs um, and, and, and create a framework for that innovation um, to, uh, to make a profit out of it, to create a product out of it. Uh, so technically, as I said earlier, we need to, first of all, for any innovation, we need to create a, a practical uh, business plan around that innovation. Um, and I think for, for that, uh, we need to provide training for to the employees. Um, if you're talking about an academic institution, uh, definitely, as you've seen, uh, there are emergence of a lot of uh, in, in-campus accelerators or incubators providing trainings to the students or gra- recently graduate students to develop their innovations and create a, a very practical sort of a, um, a commercialization plan around that uh, idea. And within the company, de- technically we need uh, to allocate time, resources, budget, um, and training, and a mindset and a culture you know, within the company to, um, uh, to, to develop that sort of a, you know, commercialization pr- plan around that innovation. What steps can be taken in your view by academic institutions and specifically postdoctoral educators uh, to, encor- to encourage entrepreneurship? And more broadly, how can we instill these skills and that that culture of entrepreneurship within our workforce? The most important, the first step is to create the mindset among the students in academic institution and then providing them with the training. So we have to offer, first of all, uh, the mindset of the professors and also the institutions uh, has to sort of um, encourage students our graduates uh, to um, to pursue their novel ideas, an idea they think that they, there is a there is a niche uh, to get into market uh, and they actually solve a, a problem within an industry. Uh, so that's the first thing, and then creating um, uh, providing trainings to all of those um, uh, entrepreneurs. Um, as you said, there are a lot of incubators and accelerators providing um, like uh, amazing training programs to 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 the students. Um, and I guess uh, the best, uh, I guess, the sweet spot would be, uh, you know, providing trainings for um, postdoc uh, fellows because they have enough of scientific background, they have uh, good management skills at the same time, and they have developed their own novel ideas. And I think if they have proper uh, business training uh, or entrepreneurship training, they can bring that into reality. Um, and um, so if, speaking of my story, uh, I, had, I was exactly in the same situation. I was, I was a graduate student, I was a PhD in a faculty of pharmacy at the University of Toronto. Was, uh, we, we had an amazing technology working. Uh, then when I was talking about the mindset, the mindset was given to me by, I hear a lot of news of, you know, that if you have a novel idea, uh, there is incubators within the campus that you can uh, participate in and see if you can develop a, you can create a commercialization plan or a business plan around your uh, novel technologies. And then that urged me in speaking with my supervisor, Dr. Charlie Boo at the Faculty of Pharmacy at UFT, uh, that yeah, this is this is a very uh, interesting path to pursue entrepreneurship. And then uh, we uh, founded Nanology Lab together with uh, Dr. Shirley. We expanded the team and uh, created a very uh, sort of a practical sort of a um, commercialization path and a plan around the technology. When it comes to entrepreneurship in Canada, what would you say we can do better or perhaps what are we doing that we shouldn't be doing uh, if we want to be more intrapreneurial? I think it requires significant uh, uh, systematic sort of a support from the federal government, uh, to be honest, um, uh, because uh, it, it brings risks uh, to uh, it, 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 and risks means that you, you have to spend money 
uh, um, to develop that sort of a first mindset and training and then create that innovation and bring that into um, practice. So um, I think programs such as MyTax, which I've uh, been in touch with and I got for two years that fellowship, I think what, what are one of the best examples of such um, systematic support. Uh, I think MyTax and similar sort of uh, uh, in internship programs or fellowship programs uh, proposed by government working with academic institution are one of the impeccable sort of examples to help and create that mindset training and uh, uh, creating the shelter uh, for uh, the entrepreneurs or intrapreneurs within organization or ac academic institution to pursue their ideas, the novel ideas, and and um, bring that uh, into uh, you know uh, commercialization. With that in mind, uh, if you had thirty seconds to pitch. Uh, a person in Canada or a group uh, with some influence on entrepreneurship in the country. Um, who would you pitch and what would you say in 30 seconds or less? I guess I would really pitch it to Ministry of uh, Job Creation. Um, and definitely, I think they're the best people to hear your story and um, hear what are the entrepreneurs looking for, what are the challenges they're facing with. And uh, I guess they're, I've been in touch with them. Uh, they're very open to hear all the uh, those uh, you know stories from entrepreneurs and trying to overcome with the current challenges that um, gra recent graduate students or any employees uh, or as an entrepreneurs within an organization are faced with um, and further adapt the system to create that atmosphere and environment uh, within Canada to better serve this um, culture. <laughs>